We got a good matchup last night to figure out where the Nuggets stand in the Western Conference. And the big key for the Warriors was how they wanted to attack Nikola Jokic in the half court. They've had success in the past, bringing him up in the Steph pick and rolls, and it didn't take long for them to go with him to the left. They force a switch, Joker has to step up, and Steph gets a wide open triple he can make in his sleep but just bricks it. At the end of the half, Green sets a great pick to erase KCP and Curry gets another pretty good look at the top of the key but was an inch off all night, missing 8 of 9 threes. Using some get action out top, Curry is able to sprint away from Gordon and catch Jokic with his hands down a second too long, and going to his left is the easier way to shoot this since his shooting hip and elbow are already aligned to the hoop, but he bricks it off the back rim and the Nuggets were sensing their opportunity. With the end of the half ticking closer, the Warriors force a switch and Jokic looks like he's dead, but with so few seconds left it made sense for KCP to fly in there and reach, thwarting another attempted attack on Jokic. I'm sure the Warriors are worried about KCP ignoring the rolling Draymond and getting aggressive in his pursuit of Curry since he forces another turnover. By the time the Warriors figured this out, it was way too late. Draymond slips the screen this time to get to the open space quicker and Jokic isn't fast enough to get back to the rim to protect it without fouling. This action did work a few times as Curry brings Joker into the lane and Bajemski catches Murray sleeping. However, Steph doesn't see the cut till it's too late, but the Warriors are very good at gaining the advantage and not letting up. Every catch is an attack until they reverse it to Curry who gets right by Murray, forcing Jokic to step up to help and that opens the drop off pass to Green when KCP doesn't sink and fill. Towards the end of the third, the Warriors adjusted by setting the screen as a step up on their left wing. Michael Porter Jr. correctly helps when Curry leaves Jokic behind by splitting the defenders. Aaron Gordon should be closing out to wherever the pass goes, but he stays glued to Clay instead of the good shooting Quinones, who makes them pay with the wide open three. Bringing Jokic out in the pick and roll is a great way to attack the Denver defense, this time with Clay running it, who attracts the double, and now Draymond is in the lane, but he throws the ball away to eliminate their layup. Wiggins wasn't about to let that happen again as they target Jokic with the step up screen and he snakes the dribble back into a beautiful Euro inside hand finish. You might not realize that Draymond has been an elite three point shooter this year, albeit in a very small sample size of a mere two and a half per game, but he still won't command any gravity as they lure Jokic to help one pass away, opening up the open shot from the left wing. Putting Jokic's man in the corner is an advantage as it allows him to lurk in the lane for 2.9 seconds at a time and get in the way of cutters. And what's the use in shooting well from three when you chicken out and throw this dying quail across the court that of course gets stolen? Again, they run Draymond to the corner in the small ball lineup featuring Pajemski in the backcourt. Notice how Jokic can hover in the area to support the smaller KCP against Kaminga in the post. Draymond tries to cut along the baseline, but Jokic's sag on him eliminates a good angle and allows him to recover after the catch. Jokic again ignores Draymond to stand in the lane, all while the shot clock ticks down and BP has to take a tough buzzer beater. And if Jokic has to guard Looney, he'll ignore him even more than Draymond, which blows up what would have been a gorgeous low post split when Nikola takes one step over to knock the ball away into a turnover. Another way to attack Jokic is to have his man set pin downs and hope to catch him sacking so low he can't pressure the outside shots into misses. As Looney waits to set a screen on Watson, Jokic will just stand inside the lane and watch as Clay nets one of his five threes in the first half. Here's another one where Looney rubs KCP off the pin down and Jokic has no interest in stepping out to get a hand up, so Clay lights them up again. When Clay curls into the lane because Murray is two steps behind him, it's Jokic's spacing that makes this play work for the defense. Because he didn't step up, he's in that between zone where slipping bounce passes into the pocket is a lot harder to do. The bottom line here is that many of the old tricks the Warriors use to get open shots against Jokic aren't nearly as effective anymore, especially when he's as active as he was last night on the defensive end. And it's that same kind of activity you should be looking for with SeatGeek, the best place to find tickets to any concert, sporting event, or the theater. I've got my eye on some Billy Joel and Sting tickets, and I know I'll be getting a great deal based on the grade SeatGeek gives on the price. I've got a new code that gets you 10% off all of your ticket orders for a limited time. So download the app, use my code BBALL10, and save money on all your tickets. Act fast, just like the Warriors did in this transition opportunity, so you can save on tickets, and they can take advantage of Jokic not getting back in time to handle the old school triangle offense, where the Nuggets get blind pig, skipping the ball underneath Curry to have him break for the handoff towards the corner. Jokic is way late, and Curry nails his only three of the game. 
but they try a similar action as a flare screen, and instead of hitting Jackson Davis slipping to the basket for a dunk, Draymond lofts the pass, and Jokic breaks it all up to begin the end for the Warriors. To get back to the Steph Dre pick and roll for a second, here's an example of the Warriors exploiting the hedge by Jokic to get right to the hoop, but where it becomes unfair for the Nuggets is the ability to throw Aaron Gordon out there on the court as he hustles down off his man in the corner to just erase this shot. And midway through the fourth, notice that Jokic is guarding Gary Payton the second, while Reggie Jackson is on Draymond in this baseline of the bounds. Jokic can now hover in the paint, but it's Gordon who again digs down on the pass into yet another of the Warriors' 10 second half turnovers. We're about to get to all the wonderful Jokic offense in a second, but I want to point out that I think the difference in the series between these two would not be Jokic, but Gordon. The only player the Warriors have to guard him is Green, but he's busy having to guard Jokic most of the time. So let the manhandling begin. Over and over again, you saw Gordon just overpowering anyone the Warriors had out there to stop him, and with all the shooting around the perimeter, plus the gravity of both Jokic and Murray, it just feels like a hopeless cause for Golden State, perhaps forcing them to go back to a bigger lineup that will surely suffer from having less gravity and playmaking in it. The Nuggets on offense are a thing of beauty in large part because of Jokic's size and touchdown low. There are very few players, if any, that can handle him near the basket and offer up enough resistance to get him to miss many shots. He's got every variety of jump hook and floater and some of the softest touch for a big man we've ever seen, plus the strength and ability to ignore contact that keeps him bulldozing to the basket instead of complaining to the referees. Plus, he can relieve the pressure by stepping out to the perimeter and finding open threes, where he's more than capable of hitting at a league average clip, making this exercise defending him seem futile. But the real special sauce is how he operates out of the high post. The basic action is to get him the ball out top, then set a pin down for a cutter out of the corner into a handoff towards the top of the key. This basically serves as two consecutive screens, and they run it on the right side so their righty shooters are more naturally aligned to the hoop going to their left. This time it's Murray who takes MPJ's spot, and just check how solid the screen from Gordon is set. Now Murray has a two-step head start heading into the handoff and an open catch and shoot to his left. Here's the same play with Brown setting the pin down for Murray, then spacing to the right wing. Murray can curl around the handoff and put immediate pressure on three defenders at once, leaving the corner open and the one more pass to an open Brown for a key three ball to end the game early. I like how they use the pick and roll as a decoy to get him the ball on the left elbow. If the defense top locks or denies KCP off that screen, he simply backdoors into the open lane. The movement by Jackson occupies the weak side enough to eliminate any weak side help defense, and I love how Jokic leads the cutter by adding some arc on the pass. The Nuggets have been running this action for years, and everyone is well versed in it. This time, it's a pin down for Jokic to get him open at the elbow, and Murray's fake to the left gets Wiggins immediately out of position and recovering. The pocket pass finds Jokic with both feet in the lane, where we've already shown he's almost automatic. The screen doesn't have to be set at the elbow extended. They can split on the weak side as well, as Brown chooses to go to the middle and screen for KCP. However, watch how his slip cut acts like penetration to the basket, forcing Wiggins to help prevent a layup, and this semi-no-look pass on a laser with picture-perfect accuracy on an angle across the court is what makes Jokic so damn special. The Warriors up their pressure and force the catch to be made above the three-point line. Normally, this is a good thing for the defense, but with Wiggins again worried about the split cut that is about to happen, he doesn't see the diagonal pass to MPJ in the corner until it's too late. Clay as the lowest man must rotate over, but no one is down on the weak side to sink and cover the cutting Gordon as their lead grows. And to put a final feather in their cap, they run their all-time favorite version. With Murray back screening for Gordon at the elbow, you have to be worried about the lob to the rim. But on the switch, Clay is now two steps behind Murray, who is running into the handoff. Even though it's well contained, it flows right back into the pick and roll. And despite only having five seconds left on the shot clock, no one panics. They've done this a thousand times before. And somehow Jokic knows that Gordon is there as the ball is dunked an instant before the shot clock buzzer goes off. I thought maybe Jokic had glanced toward the left corner before he caught the ball, but no, he just turns and lobs this in one motion with the wizardly sense that Gordon would be there just in time, which he was. The pass at the end to, to Gordon for the dunk, you know, I think with two minutes left was, I mean, I was kind of right behind him. He didn't, even, he didn't even, I don't even think he saw him, he just knew he would be there. And that is the burden any team will have facing this Nuggets team in the playoffs. 
personally, I don't think any other team in the league can stop them four times within 10 days or so. And that means they have to be the favorites to win it all for the second consecutive year.